continue to battle for first place, and the uh, Ravens continue to battle. Some of the young players battle for jobs on the backfields with helmets and pads on as John Harbaugh, just as the football gods like it out there in Owings Mills. Luke is on the scene out there. I will be out there before the week is over as well. We'll be tweeting and opining about all things mandatory camp. But meanwhile, in Cleveland, they're uh, doing uh, mandatory camps out there, but no one's paying attention to that. They're all getting ready for that big parade that they're holding there. Not for the uh, the NBA Warriors, but the AHL Calder Cup Lake Erie. I, I don't even know what they're called. So I've gone out to Cleveland. I'm going to welcome Daryl Ryder in. He is right or wrong fan on Twitter and longtime Browns writer and Cleveland lover at 92.3, the fan out in the land of Cleveland. Often my foil. I have many of them in Cleveland. People think the people in Cleveland don't like me, Daryl. Um, you know, I, I'm more popular amongst the media in Cleveland than I let on, right? Yeah, you are, and it's not that we don't like you. We just, you know, have spirited debate, spirited conversation. We do, we do. That does not now. That does not mean that we don't like you. We just don't like what you have to say. So, well, that's just on the Modell family. I mean, as long as I drift away from that, you know, everything else is cool, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Big fans of. Nestor up here in the land. You know what? I can't believe I didn't get invited to the hockey parade you guys are going to have because if I'm waiting for the NBA or the uh, baseball or football parade, I might be waiting a while. I think the Indians are better than we think, and we'll get to that in a minute, but there, there really was a championship in Cleveland this week, right? Yet Dan Gilbert delivered on his promise to bring a championship to Cleveland. First time since 1964, the AHL Cleveland Barons, who uh, back in that era were, were uh, as dominant as the Cleveland Browns were. They won like nine uh, Calder Cups in that era. And uh, the Calder Cup comes back to Cleveland. The Lake Erie Monster swept Hershey in the Calder Cup final. So big party this week here in Cleveland. And, uh, well, if a miracle can happen in game six and seven, maybe we'll have an even bigger party the following Let week. me ask you this. I mean, I, and I'm not being flippant here because, you know, I've been to Cleveland. I went to Richfield for uh, old uh, Cleveland uh, Force games, uh, and I was there, to, you know, Mark Price era. I saw the Cavs play down there. Uh, I never saw any concerts down there. Uh, it was more Capital Center era. You know, I've been out there at the Convocation Center. I've been to, I, I've seen more events, concerts, uh, stuff in Cleveland from the Agora, you know, straight on through. Um, you know, what will this look like when they're really is a championship. I would have think that if Ohio State would have brought a trophy up there, uh, you know, fifty thousand people would show up. What does a minor league hockey uh, celebration look like in Cleveland at this point, especially with LeBron on the cusp before trying to force a game seven? Well, I, I, it's certainly not on the scale as uh, w if the Cavaliers can pull off the miracle of miracles and get this done. But it is something that, that, that is celebrated, it is minor as it might be. Certainly the AHL is not the NHL. It's not there with Major League Baseball or the NBA or uh, the NFL on those levels. But, hey, there, there were 20,000 fans. For game number four, that was a, that was a, a, a record in the state of Ohio for, for a hockey crowd. I, I think that there's something to be said for that. And, uh, so it, it, listen, it, it, it's not on the same level. I recognize it. to end the streak that everyone keeps talking about the 52 years and 144 seasons combined between the big three, but I still think it's something that's uh, worthy of celebration. Again, it's been 52 years since an AHL team from Cleveland won uh, a title. So uh, the fans are certainly enjoying uh, a little moment in the sun, if you will. Daryl Ryder covers all things Cleveland sports. He is right or wrong fan out on Twitter. You can go follow him. That's R-U-T-I-E-R. -E um, I saw hockey. I saw the Lumberjacks play there like maybe 20-some yep. years ago. That, that sounds right, right? They were in the other league. They were in the WHA maybe? Hockey Association. I think it, was, I, I, it was the WHL. Okay, WHL, my bad. Right, okay, my bad. They were playing Muskegon that day. I'm not making this up. <laughs> no, you're not. I, I remember the days of the Cleveland Lumberjacks when they were at the Richfield Coliseum, and then they, uh, they moved downtown with the Q uh, before eventually going away. Then the, the, uh, uh, the AHL came back in the form of the Cleveland Barons for a spell. They went away, and then Dan Gilbert bought a team. I think that they came from Vegas, if I'm not mistaken, and, input, and brought them back. Uh, to Cleveland and, and renamed them the uh, the Lake Erie Monsters. Well, okay, uh, not lock monsters, just monsters. 
N- yeah, just just that. Yeah, not no Loch Ness monsters, just monsters. There are no locks uh, in Cleveland. There are only lakes. Right, a very big lake in Cleveland, and uh, some like to say a burning river too. Well, you know what? Uh, you know what? We'll get to the Cuyahoga catching on fire and all the music inspired by that at some point. Um, I was impressed by the Cavaliers in Game Five, and I know you could say Draymond Green's not there. Um, you know, Irving was impressive. I mean, I, I've said from the outside, and look, you're very close to it in there, right? So I, I don't know that there are any excuses if the Cavaliers were to lose, like. They weren't the better team, as an example, or even last year, the injuries. But a loss to Cleveland, and it's LeBron's fault. And if they win, you know, I guess he'll get credit. He'll be the king of the parade and all that stuff. But you'll look back on game five if they win and say uh, Kyrie Irving uh, sort of came of age and played a big, big game in a big, big time. Uh, and that's going to be necessary to get this thing to seven, of course, as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kyrie Irving's been fantastic uh, in these finals right there with LeBron. Here's the funny thing about LeBron. And listen, he's not the, he's had his sloppy stretches in the in these finals where he's turned the ball over. He's he's uh, the defensive lapses, but when you look at his body of work in the finals, he is putting on another legendary performance. I tweeted this out uh, earlier this week when I, I you know, he's on pace to become the second player in NBA Finals history to lead both teams in points, assists, and rebounds. The first guy to do it, LeBron James, and that was last year's uh, NBA Finals. So even if the Cavaliers aren't able to pull this miracle off, and let's be realistic, it's going to take a miracle. They're trying to do what nobody has done in history, and that is come back in a Finals trailing three games to one. Uh, They're trying to become the third team in history to at least force a seventh game, and the first since I want to say like the 1966 Knicks against Rochester or something <laughs> like that. I mean, it, it just it, it hasn't happened. So if they're even able to get it to a game seven, and then if it's a game seven, all bets are off, and I'll take LeBron James and Kyrie Irving any day of the week and twice on Sunday. I'll, I'll take my chances. But um, the reality is. Uh, let's step back from uh, from fantasy land here and go back to reality. The reality is Golden State is the better basketball team. Jermon Green is going to come back with a vengeance. There's no question about that. And uh, I, I, I actually expect that Golden State's going to close it out again in Cleveland in Game 6 um, because what the Cavs are trying to do is just so difficult. They dug themselves a hole and for everybody that wants to talk about momentum in these finals, there's no such thing. Aside from Golden State winning games one and two by a combined 48, there has been no ebb and flow to these finals. The Cavs came back and ran them out by 30 in game three. And Golden State swaps back and takes game four. Cavs come back. In. There's been no real ebb and flow and momentum carrying game to game in this series. So that's why I don't buy that. It's going to take two more games from LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. And hopefully at some point we can get Kevin Love off the milk carton and uh, the APB be successful and they find him uh, and he can step up in uh, the final two games if it's able to go that way. But um, there's a massive uphill climb that the Cavaliers got to make before we can even talk about a decisive seventh game Sunday night at Oracle Arena. Well, one of the things was just how poorly Golden State shot down the stretch at home, which has been, you know, really their calling card. It's how you win 73 games. Uh, you pour it on. I mean, it's worth 13 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, missing shots. Curry was off. Uh, certainly no green was a big factor. And uh, and I really thought kind of LeBron had his way early on uh, as much as there was shooting going on at Clay Thompson. Uh, LeBron sort of jamming through the lane. You know, Golden State doesn't have the ability to do that without green, right? Yeah, they, they, they lost their rim protector there in, in, uh, in, in losing grain to that suspension. Um, and, and listen, you know, the Cavaliers did, an, did two things right in Game 5. One, they attacked the basket. You know, uh, too many times earlier in the season, series here, LeBron, what would happen early in the game, he'd attack the basket, he wouldn't get the calls, so then he'd just say, well, I'm not getting rewarded for being aggressive and going to the basket, so I'm going to go ahead and settle for the you know, 12- to 18-foot jump shot or even uh, you know, shooting from the perimeter. 
Uh, and he can't do that, whether or not those whistles are blowing or not. He still has to maintain that aggressiveness and go at Golden State. Some of the shots that Kyrie Irving was making in Game 5 were just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, they were Steph Curry ridiculous. And that's a co- I mean, that's just a compliment because those are the type of shots that Steph Curry makes. And for everyone that's talked about, uh, you know, the second thing, that the Cavs did well in game five. They withstood the runs from Golden State because that's how the Warriors beat you. Curry and Thompson and Iguodala and they did they go on these eight, these twelve nothing, eighteen to two runs, and you don't know what hit you because they it happens so fast. It's just this avalanche uh, of scoring. They they take uh, the one little turnover mistake and they just turn it into a boatload of points before you even realize what happened. And you look up the scoreboard, and you're like, what happened? That happened in game one. or I'm sorry, in in, in game two, I should say. Uh, Third quarter, Cavaliers were down double digits. They battled back. They volleyed the lead back and forth a couple of times. Uh, They led by one or two uh, in a few of those instances. LeBron checks out with the team down three and about two and a half minutes to go in the quarter so he could get his blow come on for the fourth quarter. When the dust settled, the Cavs were down 15 to 18 points, and he's looking at the scoreboard wanting to know what happened. And that's what the Warriors are able to do. They, they wear you down with these runs, and in the two victories, the Cavaliers have been able to actually withstand those, and that's what they're going to have to do in game six on their home floor and that's what they're going to have to do again in, as you, you alluded to, the hardest gym to win in. That was only the fourth time this season that the Warriors lost on their home floor. They lost twice in the regular season, and they now lost uh, twice here in the postseason. Very difficult to beat that team once in their own gym, let alone twice. And again, that's why I'm, uh, I'm not trying to take away from what the Cavaliers did, because that is a game that I will tell my kids and grandkids about. That was, just, that was a once-in-a-lifetime thing we saw in Game 5 uh, with two teammates scoring 41 points. So that's, a, that's the first time that's ever happened in finals history. But the reality is they're going to have to repeat that two more times if they want to make even more history. And you know what? Hey, you're trying to end a 52-year curse. Why not make some history along the way doing it? Who knows? He, he is Daryl Ryder, a longtime sports radio host, as well as the Browns writer at 92.3, the fan in Cleveland. You can follow him out on Twitter at Ryder Wrong. That's R-U-I-T-E-R, Wrong Fan on Twitter. Um, last thing for you would just be on the Cleveland thing and the curse. And Hey, dude, I don't need to bring it up. I mean, you Cleveland folks will bring it up for me. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's some um, self-soothing that, you know, I think goes on through all of this in believing you're not going to win, right? And I said, and, and I, you know, I'm pretty flippant when it comes to Twitter. I, I tweeted out uh, late into the night on Monday night after Game 5. I said, you know, this is the part in the play where Cleveland gets lulled into believing they're actually going to win and thinking about a parade again because when it was 3-1, to one, you felt like, you know, shoot us and put us out of our misery. You play a game like that, and now you're bringing the game home. It's... Well, this is winnable. I mean, they know how to win on their own floor, I and mean, they're pretty good. Um, and then there's, well, anything can happen in Game 7. The one thing we haven't seen is a close game, right? We haven't seen a game that's a two-point game with 30 seconds left and somebody's got to make or miss or defend the shot, or an inbound pass for that matter, or hit a free throw. Yeah, I mean, the, the closest we came to that was in Game 4 when uh, the game was pretty much tight. There was, like, I want to say 18 lead changes and 20 or so ties in, in the game before Golden State, again, went on one of those fourth-quarter runs, and uh, the Cavs didn't have enough time to, to get themselves together and, and to recover from it. But you're right. We, we've not had that final 15 seconds, final countdown by Europe. It's just blared. Everyone's losing their fingernails and chugging Maalox and Pepto. We, just, we haven't had that moment. Well, we haven't had anybody who had to do anything under fire no. yet, really, here. You yeah, know? It, yeah, absolutely. We've just we've not had that nail-biter in this series, and maybe Game 6 will be that. We, again, we came close in Game 4. Uh, game 5 was just rather entertaining. It went back and forth, but again, the Cavs seized control midway through that fourth quarter and didn't take their foot off the gas. So maybe we'll get that nail-biter in, in game six. But uh, to me, I, I, I'll be honest with you, Nestor, you know, uh, it's been such a crazy series. It wouldn't shock me if the Cavs won in game six and then 
the ultimate Cleveland thing happens and we get that nail biter in game seven and something ridiculous happens in the closing seconds and the Warriors win it. One you know, more I chapter just, to make you forget about the drive, yeah, right, the right, fumble, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because every time I turn on uh, and, and I watch the games being replayed on, uh, you know, ESPN, the broadcast, every game, it's the drive, the fumble, the shot. I mean, they even talked to Steve Kerr earlier in the series, uh, and he said, yeah, you know, back when I was a Cav in the 90s, and we kept running into those Chicago Bulls, which you know, was no fun. Yeah, I knew about the curse, and that was right in the middle of the drive and the fumble. And all. We, 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 you know, we knew that Cleveland hadn't won in forever, and that was something that it was in the – so, I mean, it, it's something that everyone, when you come to play for a Cleveland team, whether it's the Browns, the Indians, or the Cavs, it's something that you inevitably run into if you end up in the playoffs because the deeper you go, the more the pressure builds and the more questions come. Oh, by the way, you know, it's been since 1964 since anyone's ever been able to actually win something here. So how do you feel and about who was the And who was pressure? the owner of that team? Uh, of the, what, 64 Browns? Yeah. I believe it was Art Modell. It was Art and, Modell. I just wanted to point that out. I, 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 uh, and that's, that's it. fine because uh, the team never recovered since. He, he uh, forced Jim Brown into retirement. He uh, fired Paul Brown. And he's uh, also he responsible for the, the only team. parade your parents ever had. Come on. Yeah, I'm, 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 you know what? Unfortunately, um, uh, the the negative outweighs the good there. <laughs> All right, writer. Uh, I'm not going to let you sit here and disparage our forefathers. That's it. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> the forefathers of your franchise. He's your problem now. You know what? I have my uh, my, my video uh, camera on now in the studio. <laughs> and I, I can actually, uh, you know, if I maneuver it the right way, I can actually show the picture of the art model. Uh, you know, of the only thing I, I have an art model picture uh, right on, I have to learn green screen, but it's right there if you're watching the video. Uh, it's the only picture I have on the wall behind me here in the studio, bro. Oh, it's, that, that is, and please, t please don't tell me it's the one where he's holding the Vince Lombardi trophy, because that might be the worst picture in Cleveland sports history. Art yeah, Modell actually, it's a picture a of him, it's a picture of him Raven. smiling at the construction oh. site of our stadium here, so there. Uh. I, you know what I'll say? That I, I will say this. Baltimore is a beautiful town. I love it every time I visit. It, you got a great football stadium there. Camden Yards is one of my favorite ballparks in all of baseball. The people there are some of the nicest people you ever meet. So I really don't have a bad thing to say about the city of Baltimore or, uh, or its fans. It's just, uh, uh, again, unfortunate that the, uh, the hardware that we wish were in Cleveland is uh, the property of uh, your football team. All right, enough of you. Good luck. You know, listen, I, I, honestly, and I've said this, and I'm not just saying this because you're here right now, Daryl. I'm pulling for Cleveland to have a parade. I, I'm not a LeBron guy, but if he – listen, if they win these games and there's a parade next week – God bless all of you. I'll get on a plane and come out there and enjoy it with you because uh, you will have earned say, it. You know? That would be the hard way. You better way. crash it. That yeah, would I mean, be the hard way. Absolutely, and if there is a parade next week, I'm expecting you to come crash it, but and, and it will be the thing of legends because, again, nobody's ever done what the Cavs are trying to do right now. 32 teams have tried it. Only three teams have gotten to a Game 7, to, or I should say only two teams, rather, have gotten to a Game 7 to attempt it. So what they're trying to do, it, it, it's of historical proportions. What we saw in Game 5, of historical proportions. So if we can... Get Game 5 in Game 6 and Game 7, then yeah, it'll be fantastic. But I think that the reality is that, as Steve Kerr said after Game 5, I certainly like where we sit better than where they're uh, sitting. And that's it, 3-2, to two, and uh, the Cavaliers' backs against the wall and having to win uh, the, the last three games to bring home a championship. Dude, but I'm holding that... Sunday night free, okay? That's all I'm saying. I'm holding Sunday night free just in case. If there's ever a way, again, if there's ever a way to break a 52-year sports drought, it's to do it in this fashion, to, in, in never-been-done-before fashion. Because you know what? Cleveland has lost so many times in never-been-done-before fashion. It's only right that they actually win it in never-been-done-before fashion. So we'll see what they're able to do in game. Hey, look, go enjoy some of that Michael Simon food either way, man. I appreciate you coming on, Daryl. Always the best.
Always a pleasure, Nestor. Thanks for having me. He is right or wrong fan out on Twitter. Daryl Ryder from 92.3, the fan in Cleveland, talking all things NBA Finals. We got Ravens. We got Orioles. Uh, I've stuck some NBA in here. I've done some Stanley Cup residue. Uh, I've got some authors coming on this. We've got a lot of good stuff happening here. You can find us out in the Bio Toyota Audio Vault at WNST.net for anything you miss. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, and WNST Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking. Baltimore Sports.